Hi there. Welcome to my uh, makeover of this uh, kind of ugly, sort of ugly, uh, Strange Town lot. It's a pretty classic lot. Anybody who's played in Strange Town knows it quite well. Uh, it is the Strange Town pool. I I really like the kind of the bones of this lot, but I feel like it could use some more uh, fun stuff going on. You know, I really one thing I really like about this lot is sort of the there's a lot of functionality going on, and what I mean by that is like there's the little booth up front that has like the uh, where maybe you would like pay for admission or something. There's this little uh, almost like a utilities house out back where maybe they're heating the, the hot tubs or doing pool stuff. And I also just generally really like the idea of having this sort of oasis in the desert town of Strange Town. But, and we are gonna transition here. So what I decided to do was the majority of the speed makeover, is kind of what I'm calling it, is gonna be mostly the decorating. Because the actual bones of the lot, I mainly kept the same with a few tweaks. Now there will be a point later on in the speed makeover process that I do do some more tweaks to the structure, but mainly it's almost the same. The only real things I changed was the placement of the little booth a little bit, and then also the where the entrance is, where the actual when Sims come in gets changed around. And I do change it around um, differently from how it is in this lot. Uh, I mean in this version that we see here. One thing I definitely really wanted to do was keep the um, very uh, almost lush tropical oasis feeling because that really I felt like is one of the fun sort of themes. But I also wanted to keep some of what would be maybe more uh, maybe more native plants like these cacti, little little tiny cacti like the, I think they're like prickly pear or whatever, and then some of the larger like saguaro cactus or whatever they're called. But I mean, I'm sure the palms and stuff technically would be uh, kind of native, but you just don't see them as much around Strange Town as you would some of the cactus. I liked it to still be lush. I'm also using some of those um, Bon Voyage palm trees, coconut trees, whatever you want to call them, and then other sort of various things. And one thing I did want to mention is while doing the sort of uh, pre preparation of the actual structure of the lot, I did make a choice on the uh, the th the th color scheme or color theme and I really like I'm a big fan of using like pink and green together it has to be just the right shades but so I used some of uh, this custom and I do mostly use Maxis objects in this but there was a couple of instances where I chose to use a custom content because I felt like it really helped kind of elevate things just a little bit further and um, these pool lights are one of those things. They're those neon lights, but somebody made them to go in the pool. But also all of the concrete, all it is is a recolor of the, the base game concrete that would, I think, normally just be like the sidewalk concrete. I do have a default replacement for the regular sidewalk concrete, but this actual um, concrete around the pool is just a, um, a recolor of that same base game thing. But yeah, I really, uh, really enjoy the, the the little pink and green moment. And it was just kind of fun building up this really cool little place for Sims in Strange Town to get to go and have some fun. I kind of thought of the more the building area that we'll get to, where of course kind of decorating the actual pool zone here, which is very important to this lot. And I'm really happy with how it ends up turning out. Um, but the actual buildings, I ended up sort of approaching it like a some kind of a maybe like a little plaza like most like small towns would have where they would have their own little uh, almost like a little shopping center sort of thing but I did kind of keep it in the theme of the pool I also uh, of course as you can see added a second hot tub usually that's one of the issues with this lot I find is having just the one hot tub and a bunch of sims fighting over it I liked having two it also kind of balanced Made a little bit of symmetry on this side because there was just this kind of empty area in this corner. So 
I kind of like that. I've added the little little pink towels. I thought that would be kind of a fun little detail. I really like digging through all of the Maxis objects, all these little detail objects that just are part of the game, aren't custom content at all, and trying to find sort of unique or creative ways to use them. I think it really just adds another level of just detail to the lots without having to have a bunch of clunky clutter uh, custom content filling things up. And I really love this this color of the lighting. I think one of the most important things for like making Sims 2 builds pop is really the lighting. And of course I do have a lighting mod. Uh, I think most people who play the game now have some sort of uh, lighting mod, whether it's like the Radiance mod or some other version. But um, so that kind of makes things a little more vibrant. Although while I was building this, I did not have any sort of reshade filter or anything installed. This is just the mod in the regular game. Um, I do sometimes use a reshade or I actually recently switched from reshade to G shade and I think it's been functioning pretty well. But anyway, uh, the lighting is really nice. I think that's, like I said, what kind of um, makes the builds pop a little bit more, especially at night. I did end up, uh, when I did a play test of this lot, which I, when I did do the play test, I'll have some uh, little clips of it in the end uh, when looking at sort of the final product and stuff. But when I did the play test, it ended up being at night. So all of the color was just like popping really nicely. And I was really happy with how it ended up looking. Um, I did end up making a decision to add some bamboo here along the front. I couldn't quite, I didn't like just the regular flowers. There was something about the bamboo that was a lot more like filled, it filled in, I guess. Now I probably won't have this lot be like an owned business lot. Technically you could if you used like the admission stands and stuff, you could have somebody own this lot. Now I did just put like a um, little sign, open close sign, because I thought it looked kind of fun. It was a good way to kind of fill that front area. But anyway, um, probably if you did have somebody own this lot, you'd have an issue with maintaining some of the plants because of how I've placed them and or blocked them in. <laughs> but as just a regular community lot, I don't think it should really cause any issue unless you are on the community lot for a very long time. Maybe then the plants would progress into like an ugly form. I don't know. Anyway, I really like this little admission office. I think it's just, I like adding functional sort of little things in my lots like this. It just, again, adds a layer of detail. I did add, uh, this is gonna be a bathroom we get going on in here, just a general little public bathroom. Um, I don't think, when I did my little play test, it didn't seem to be too crowded. It is kind of small, and maybe if you're on the lot for a while and lots of sims accumulate, you may end up with a little bit of bumping into each other in here, but I think overall it, it'd probably be okay. But, yeah, inside I did keep... I One thing I had fun with with the rooms, well, this room I made kind of simple black and white sort of theme with some pops of color. Um, each of the other rooms, or like, not necessarily, I don't want to say rooms necessarily, but each of the other sort of shops, <laughs> the shop fronts, whatever, I did um, inside end up kind of having a color scheme, which was really fun, trying to find their own little individual color for whatever business was going on in there. I also had some fun with the rugs. That's one of my favorite things to do is try and incorporate some of the weird tacky rug patterns that exist in this game and sort of making them work in their own little funky way. So in this here, I've, I've transitioned into... Um, I got really obsessed with the idea of having a little shower station. I don't know how it works in other places. I'm from the United States, and in the many places in the U.S. that have a public pool, they require you to rinse off before you get into the pool. Um, usually it's just like with your bathing suits on. But of course there's an object that came with the uh, Sims 2 University which is the that standalone shower. And if I recall, it does have um, a sort of a thing where Sims don't care about their privacy while they're using it. But I, th I thought it, it would be, it looks 
sort of realistic to have like a little shower station outside the entrance. But of course it would create, in, in the actual function of the game, it might create kind of some uh, very fun, interesting situations of random townies just stripping down on the sidewalk. <laughs> but anyway, so I kind of got obsessed with creating, making it fit somewhere that made sense. So in turn, I ended up kind of cutting and chopping this sort of front section of the lot. But also just kind of outside of the whole shower concept, I kind of uh, enjoyed the way this, this sort of entrance area is now kind of outside of the actual perimeter of the lot so you kind of have to go past admission or whatever to get in um i did end up changing up the the actual appearance of the showers at first you can see i kind of put down some more grimy looking stuff i thought that would add some character but then i got frustrated with the way the blue kind of didn't go along with the rest of this color scheme i was going for and so I scrapped that and went for something else. Well, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. We're going to jump over. Here we have continued back into the main buildings. Uh, this I decided to set up like a little gym. thought it seemed to make sense to be able to get a, your sims to get their workout in and then go cool off in the pool. Uh, it was a little bit of a challenge trying to fit all of the items in here. At some points, it was obvious that some of the spacing was going to be wrong for the, the functionality of the object, so I had to kind of make things work. Uh, I ended up adding in these this little uh, counter area where maybe, I guess, Sims could have some refreshments. Uh, I put in a, one of the little mini fridges, and uh, I do put in a little coffee machine. Um, I do t end up tweaking around with the uh, overall color scheme of this lot quite a bit. And it took me a little while to kind of decide. I do, when I'm when I'm doing these sort of decorating videos, these speed decorating slash building stuff, um, I do sometimes cut out a lot of the fiddling around because I do a ton of messing around with different uh, color schemes and floor and, and wall patterns because I really, again, I like to really try and explore the options that are available in the game before I turn to any custom content. I try to get really creative with it because kind of having that limitation is really fun. Now I ended up landing on this wavy pattern, which is I think from like a teen, the, is it the teen stuff pack or no, it's family fun pack. I think it's supposed to be like a kid's bedroom paint, but it, it looks like a really cool, funky, like pool house gym thing. We got the little surfer guy ended up there on the, on the poster. I, as you can see, I did put a lot of posters around this lot because it, it felt right for Strange Town to maybe have like all of these uh, little posters advertising local bands and things and whatever. It just seemed, I, I feel like having sort of the not so crisp and clean look with having all the cluttered posters helped. I think it just seems right for Strange Town. Also, as we saw, I just used some of these light signs outside. Unfortunately, I, I usually like to use, um, in the university pack, there are some Greek letters that um, come along with that pack for uh, the, the Greek houses, obviously. But uh, for some reason, my uh, I couldn't find them in my catalog here. I'll have to figure it out because I, I do have a mod that reorganizes my catalog. And I know I have them available on my residential lots, but I don't know what... Because I know I've used them on community lots before, and I like to use them as a way of creating signage um, with, again, with Maxis objects. They, they're kind of versatile in that way. But unfortunately, I couldn't find them. But that was my initial intention, was to put those letters across some of the upper areas to look like signage. But I ended up making do with some other signs and things. Because at the time I was um, building most of this, I was kind of sick <laughs> with like a flu bug so I wasn't feeling too hot and I just felt like not trying to screw around with it too much I just wanted to do some building and not have to mess around with game files or anything so yeah um also this little room I'm working on this little shop I really like a lot it does end up going through a lot of different uh processes a, a lot of different I don't know what you want to say like evolutions of of different looks different color schemes right now we've got sort of a pink and I, I can't decide on this back accent wall 
But eventually I find this awesome yellow rug. <laughs> Again, some folks probably look at it and go, that's like the hideous rug. But honestly, I love that sort of like offbeat Sims 2 ugly rug thing and trying to use it as like a, f a feature in the, in the build. And then finding other colors that sort of match it. I was able to use these uh, yellow flamingos. Of course, the flamingo light is like super iconic. And I never get to use the yellow color. Usually it's like pink or blue, maybe green. I use the green outside of the building, actually. One of my favorite art styles is like pop art. And of course this, that comic book style pop art is really fun. And so I use a lot of that. I think that probably inspires a lot of my color choices and things too. Of course, got this classic little uh, clothing sign. That's one thing I find is there are a lot of signs available in the game that work really well for things, or you can kind of make work for things. I will say the I do end up swapping out the big pop poster, and sometimes it's like when I'm when I'm building in the moment, I'm like making these decisions, and then when I watch it back editing, I think mm, I kind of regret that. <laughs> and one thing I regret is removing that poster that or not that poster, but that big pop art painting that's in the background now. But I do end up replacing it with a really fun um, H&M stuff poster, which is, I think is what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Um, what's really nice about these H&M posters, they do have non H&M recolors. And I just, I love how disinterested and bored this sim looks like it's perfect just kind of a weird little, kind of an, again, that offbeat sort of campy style of The Sims 2. <laughs> so I really like that. Um, and then we moved on to the last shop space here. Now, originally this was a, it's interesting to sort of compare previously in the base game lot, both of the two places we just decorated, the gym and the clothing store, was all bathrooms. <laughs> These big, ugly, boring bathrooms. But now there are nice colorful shops and, uh, I don't know, community places, whatever you want to say, or whatever the gym would technically be. But this one was some sort of food place. There was like a, I don't know, like a bunch of counters and like a, a fridge and stuff, but not like an actual fridge. It was like one of those grocery store refrigerators. But so I decided to run with that and make it like a little coffee shop type thing, although um, and that's also one of the other pieces of custom content you may have noticed that I used. I have a replacement for the coffee maker that makes the, the, the counter underneath it invisible. So you can place it on whatever counter you want. So that's really useful. Although in the playtest version, I realized that I was actually using, I had it facing the wrong way on the counter, like the counter had to be flipped around. So I do end up uh, fixing it in the final the final version that's going to be downloadable, which I haven't mentioned yet. It is fixed, so it is actual functional. And of course, we'll link all of the custom content, which there really isn't much. Um, but yeah, so I started out with this like this this wall with the cityscape. Again, I don't know. I think it's supposed to be like a kid's bedroom thing, but I use it a ton in like little shops and stuff. I think it looks really like. I don't know. Sometimes if you if you decorate it correctly, it almost has like a a little bit of like an 80s feel. I don't know how to describe it exactly. It's like not exactly that, but it's something in that direction. But then as I was messing around, I was like this feels too fancy for a strange town. And so I started um adding these little like the tires and the gnomes, of course. The gnomes have kind of become a little iconic character on the channel here. And then in turn, I kind of started redoing everything in the kind of thought of what would a weird little funky strange town cafe look like. And I decided it's a little bit more uh, space themed, but also kind of like like a junky, not quite a not quite not quite steampunk, but kind of just like a weird punk sort of thing. I don't really know how to describe it well. But it's other than maybe just strange town core. Is that a thing? Is that a thing on the Tumblr? Probably. I'm sure it is. But yeah, we have this wonderful space. Again, I think this this wallpaper is probably meant for a kid's bedroom. I, I use a lot of that stuff 
in my builds. But um, we have this really fun space themed wallpaper. Oh yeah, so we have this kind of fun, funky uh, space background. And I was just trying to kind of theme all the things to that, that funky, eclectic, strange town vibe, if you will. Uh, I was really set for some reason on having like a washer and a trash compactor, I guess just for the waste of whatever got left over from the um, espresso machine. But I did end up kind of giving up on that because it just didn't fit right. And I found the the uh, apartment life trash chute. I assume it's functional on any lot. When I tested it on my uh, little play test, it did work. I assume it'll work on every other everyone's <laughs> I don't think I would have a special mod that would make it work not on apartment lots but it kind of adds it almost looks like a little I don't know some kind of spaceship shoot you're, you're sending your trash out into the atmosphere that that feels very strange town <laughs> I don't know <laughs> but anyway um, I was also thinking of course I added in these um, the vending machines there which one thing that is again very fun about the vending machines is they're very, uh, they, they send off a really nice light that is also a colored light. So I like using those places too because again, they create that lighting that creates sort of a pop to the to your kind of the look of the build, especially at night. But I'm also um, adding in some uh, sound speakers here now too, which I did a makeover of a pool lot in Pleasant View. I didn't do like a speed build of it at all. I kind of did it on my own which I regret, I think I will maybe do like a redecoration of it in some way or some kind of quick little fix up just to kind of, just so that it would be kind of fun and then also share it for download. And, um, but one of the big mistakes I made in that lot was I put down too many of those stupid speakers and they're actually kind of strong, I guess is the right way to put it. And that was a big thing with my um, play testing the lot was making sure the sound was evenly distributed and wasn't overlaying each other or like too intrusive and eventually I, I think in the final version I did move a couple of those around but it was still kind of the same ones it seemed out seemed to work out pretty good uh, in the little utility area I uh, hear that I'm working on now I turned it into sort of like the owner slash manager's office again gave it the uh, the strange town street treatment of uh, things being mismatched and eclectic and then I tried to put the um this wood stove back in that was originally in there I think it was the green color then I found this one <laughs> and that the biohazard recolor again that really screamed strange town to me like of course they would you know use recycle a a, a dangerous chemical barrel that probably actually had the dangerous chemical in it and, and you know light a fire inside of it that seems like a uh, something they would do <laughs> so so that's what they got in there we'll say that's what they used to heat the hot tub somehow some way who knows uh enter at your own risk i guess but anyway i really really like how this office turned out i chose not to add any computers just because um i didn't want sims flocking in there i did add a radio which if it become if I notice it becomes an issue myself, I'll probably delete the radio. Sometimes Sims will uh will gather. Oh yeah. That's the that's the build. I hope you enjoyed. Like I said, I will have it for download. Here's some shots of the lot in action. Uh, like I said, I got lucky and it was nighttime when I visited the lot, and it's very pretty. I really enjoy it. Uh, the colors just really pop. And the Sims, everybody seems to be moving around well and not getting, like, stuck on anything or, like, getting screwed up on anything. But yeah, it'll be uh, for download. I'll have the link in the description. Um, I'll probably make a post on my... Uh, I have a website, sundogsims.com. And then I probably also posted on my Tumblr, which I now have as just Sammy Sundog. But any of those links will be down in the description. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.